Good morning. Um, I want to introduce everyone to Karen Baker. Uh, Karen is my brother's sister. <laughs> is, is that a fair way for me to say it? That's fair. <laughs> it I, doesn't I, really I always cover it. it. <laughs> I, I find it interesting because at this point, I have a tendency just to call you my sister. Mm -hmm. um, and yet, you know, then people are like, wait, all your sisters begin with an F. Um, and you only had three. And I'm like, uh, yeah, this is that complicated story. So I, I'm just going to give people some background. Um, you know, people really do kind of know who you are because I've mentioned you um, in the past in your family. Um, my middle brother, Randy, was adopted uh, late, later in his life. Uh, we found you as his full-blooded sibling. Um, and so we've, I mean, good night. That's 20 years ago yeah yeah so so we've connected so um i've been talking to people about this idea of why they should fall in love with jesus and my idea this week is is he is grace the the ultimate in this idea of forgiveness and grace and and i've just decided you know we use words to try to define things but words always fall short and so i was trying to think of the actions what does grace look like on earth and you um, came to my mind, particularly because the last 10 years of Randy's life, you were the primary contact for the family with him. Um, and you were the one that had to go through all those emotions of him being in and out of rehab, in and out of jail. And um, you were the one that was contacted when he passed. How, how do you feel like you handled, like still loving him while thinking he's probably going to fail again. Well, failure to me doesn't dictate um, the heart and soul of a person. And it's not that Randy didn't want to succeed. He just couldn't figure out how to succeed. And deep down, I mean, we know, we all know, you know, he was a good person. Yeah. He, he, loved the family he wanted to be part of the family and i think he always became very ashamed every time that he would fail and then it would just start a cycle up again so i also think that there's there's a fine line between loving somebody and accepting them how they are in that kind of a situation and enabling them so you know you have to be very careful and uh, that that's a tough line to walk, but you just you have to recognize the true nature of the person. And he was never intentionally bad or evil. He just he just couldn't pull it together. And, I, I, and none of us know why. <laughs> right, right. And 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 um you know, one of the things I really valued about you was walking that line, because I agree, that's a very fine line. I always wanted him to know my grace. I was never upset at him. I was never disappointed in him. I was hurt that he was hurting. Um, and yet, you have to put these firm boundaries um, in place that I think some people struggle with the firm boundaries. Um, which are really not there to get rid of your grace or your heart for them, but to protect them from herself, themselves. And I thought you did a great job with that. I know there are so many times over the past 10 years that, I, you know, I would say to family members who are going to give them money or something, you need to call Karen first to see, <laughs> is he really needing this, <laughs> right? Um, and what I thought was cool is, is you never hesitated to try to reach out to him and you never hesitated to be honest with the rest to just say, listen, he's, he's not in a good place. Mm -hmm. um, and so you aren't helping him by giving him money right now. What was it like? Do you feel like there's an internal motivator that helped you just keep pressing into his life in the midst of him failing so much? Well, I always wanted him to know that, you know, he had a touchstone that mm. you can't force anyone to do something they're not ready to do. And Randy was obviously never ready to really make that commitment and change his life. Yeah. He, he would be sober and do the meetings and be working for maybe about a year. And that was all 
he could ever take each time. And then yeah. for whatever reason, he would fall back off the wagon. Um, but having gone through similar things with my mother, with um, other very close friends of ours, um, and being involved with Avenues 12 Women's Recovery Houses, I know you can't force somebody to be ready, but that doesn't mean that you can't be there for them when they reach out and be someone they know that they can trust and that they know that they can come to if they ever are potentially ready and then you can help them, you know, get on the right path. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, he, he, he knew whether it was innately or because I told him so many times <laughs> that, you know, there, there was a line. And he never crossed that with me. And I know that he did cross it with other family members. Yeah. And I know that some of our other family members had a lot of guilt, which they should not have. It was not their place to carry that burden. Right. Um, so it, it is hard. It's, it's a fine line. But he always knew that I was there. And, um, you know, thankfully, he never did cross that line with me. So yeah. we, we could keep that that part of the relationship open and available. Yeah, and, and I think um, you, you said something right there that I think is true for all of us. It wasn't our burden to, to carry, and yet it is our grace that we had for him that made us carry it, right? Um, nobody would have faulted us for just pushing him aside, but our grace is why we kept saying, I'm gonna, I'm gonna walk that, that fine line and, and walk this road with you. I, I, it, I always get kind of fascinated because, you know, first thing I noticed when we met 20 years ago is you walk like him, you laugh like him. I mean, I mean, just hearing you laugh now, I sit there and we it, have crooked and pinky. Just, right. You got the crooked <laughs> pinky like him. And, and it's, it's, it's just intriguing to me that, you know, he was raised um, in what I will call stable household. You were not um, and yet you are the stable one. Um, and you, you took care of your mom, who your description to me was she did nothing for you. Um, and yet at the end of her life, you took care of her. So what, what is it that motivated you to do that? Like, why do you have so much grace for her as well? That was... <sighs> Part of it is she had a tough mm -hmm. childhood. So I know that a lot of her issues and um, her relationship issues, and you know, even with me, stemmed from that. She was also adopted, um, but she was taken away from her parents. Um, mm -hmm. She was she was old enough to know that there were issues and and probably to have some memories and her father was arrested and her mother abandoned her mm -hmm. so she you know there were definitely issues that stemmed from that and that carried over into her being a parent mm -hmm. um she had issues much in the same way that randy did as far as being adopted mm -hmm. um where even though it wasn't the case they felt that it made them less somehow and unwanted yeah. um even though they they were chosen and they were wanted yeah. and it, the circumstances in their past were not reflective of them that was not their fault uh, yeah. but they carried that and and they felt that it was their fault so they had issues with that um I was primarily raised by my grandparents because she was a lot of times not in the picture. And when she was in the picture, it was always a, a fun and interesting experience. <laughs> like Randy. Um, like Randy. Um, I, my childhood was good and bad. It wasn't always bad with her, but you know, a lot of that had to do with my grandparents being involved. Mm -hmm. um, she meant well. She wasn't a bad person. She was just misguided and she just didn't know how to get out of her own way. And as um, I got older and she got older and she became ill, um, I 
you know, regardless, I really felt it was my responsibility. And I, I feel that um, the teachings in the Bible tell you to care for your parents. And whether I was happy about it or not, <laughs> because I really wasn't very happy about it, um, because of many of the circumstances that had happened, happened throughout my childhood, I felt like it was my responsibility and it was the right thing to do. And you have to do what you can live with. And I couldn't have lived with not taking care of her when she needed it. Yeah. I, I mean, that's so I, I've learned a lot today because I didn't know that background um, about your mom. But what I hear you um, in your voice, and I, I really love it, is that kind of grace begins with compassion, with understanding that there's reasoning, behind, you know, you have expressed multiple times now, you don't see the person as evil. Like a lot of times when somebody makes a bad decision, we immediately start to think, well, this person's evil. And you are looking at, it's not that the person's evil or, or hurtful. They are, they are hurt themselves and they don't know how to unhurt. Right. Um, and so you're going to do your best um, to do that. I really, I, I value that understanding of grace. And I think, the more we grapple with our own struggles, the easier it is to help people uh, with theirs too. The more we understand their struggles, um, the better it is. And, and so your background um, had exposed you to addiction at a pretty young age. And now, you know, and then you helped Randy throughout the, his life. And then um, you've also, and you, you mentioned this, you work with uh, women's recovery programs? Mm -hmm. um, I have been involved with Avenues 12 Women's Recovery Houses for about nine years now, and I've been the board president for the last seven. And the interesting thing about that is I got involved because of Randy. So uh, I did not know that. So, so um, he was, at, well, he wouldn't have been at one of them. How did he get you involved? No, because of his circumstances, because um, I knew how important it was for him for the men's programs that he had. And I also knew that there were not a, um, really any in this area or a lot in the state of Florida that were just focused on women's recovery. And it's very hard I mean, recovery by itself is very hard, but it's it's harder when you're in um, a mixed atmosphere. Um, one one of the major tenets of recovery is no relationships with anyone for at least a year. Right. And I mean, imagine how hard that is when you know you're in mixed company all the time trying to recover. It's 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 very difficult. So my executive director, actually, I believe just hit uh, her 25 year mark of sobriety. Oh, awesome. And yeah, she's extremely passionate about it. And there was an article in the newspaper about this new women's recovery house opening up. And I think it was right around the same time that either Randy was already here or he was coming down. And I thought, gosh, that's a, a good place to put some efforts. And, you know, even if I, I, can't help him maybe I can help some other people yeah. so I got involved we had one house at the time we now have um, a beginner's home an advanced home and sober living apartments so we, we've come a long way when you've helped a lot of people and that also helped open my eyes as far as a lot of the women that come in there you know they're they're not you know, people have this definition in their head of drug addicts or alcoholics. And so many times there are so many different circumstances that put them in that position that are no fault of their own. And they just, they, they need the help that a facility like that can offer to get them back to where they were before or back to where they need to be. Um, we have doctors and nurses and, and scientists, I mean, you know, who got addicted to pain pills because of a car accident or there's any number of circumstances. And um, that's also helped me look at people who suffer from addiction in a different way and recognize the different reasons that 
that could have happened. Yeah. Yeah. Again, that goes back to that compassion component of, of grace. And I, I really do value that. Um, just one of the things uh, that I have learned over the past couple of years that I wish I was able to express better to Randy, and I don't think I did, is relapse is a part of recovery. Mm -hmm. And you had touched on in the beginning that every time he, he relapsed, there was a guilt that kind of drove him deeper into the relapse. And I wish I could have expressed him. I'm, I'm never upset when you relapse. I'm upset when you keep using, right? Um, and so when, when he relapsed in my house and, and I was asked him to take a drug test, I just wanted to figure out, okay, what do we do next to help him? And he took it. I mean, he just, he just left. And I sit there and think, man, had I known that phrase back then and expressed it to him better back then, um, maybe I could have helped him. It's such a grace perspective, too. Um, you're not expecting a, a, somebody with an addiction to be perfect for the rest of their lives um, because that's not reasonable. Um, we just want them to get back to health once they fail. Is there any uh, final thoughts you want to share with everybody? No, just keep telling everybody I'm your sister. It's just easier. <laughs> it, yeah, but it's not as fun. <laughs> not as fun as the explanation because <laughs> saying she's my brother's sister like they right away start to go hmm <laughs> how, does, how does that work and i know the first thing people in my congregation are going to ask is how in the world did you get realtor karen to do a a, a zoom meeting with you <laughs> you're, you're really famous and i will say um, <laughs> if anyone is older and looking to move to Florida because that's when you should move to Florida, right? That real, <laughs> that realtor Karen would help help them out. And I just want to say how much I, I I appreciate you, your family. Um, I'm so grateful that you know God had introduced us, and um, you know the, the the weird circumstances around it just feels um so wonderful. And I I look forward to seeing you, uh, the family again, and uh. <laughs> I, I love your, your title. You are the realtor who cares, but I prefer <laughs> the way that your husband says it. <laughs> she says, Karen, the realtor, who cares? <laughs> so well, let me pray. No. He thinks we'll he's funny. <laughs> yeah, he's a funny guy. I like it. So uh, let's pray and then we'll wave goodbye. Father, thank you um, for Karen, for the the heart that you've given to her to serve others, to just be full of that grace and that compassion, that mercy um, that people need. And I just ask you to continue to bless her and her family, her, her work, um, that you would just uh, draw her closer to you. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. All right, now Amen. we wave goodbye. All right. Love you. <laughs>